And that is the okay. rise of political violence in this country um, or violence or violence, which is OK for political uh, means, because it strikes me. Right. You had that horrible tragedy in Nashville where mm -hmm. this transgender LGBTQ, whatever person, you know, I think killed 11 people at the Christian school in Nashville. There's so many other stories in the media. And it's just occurred to me that no one's really talking about how all of a sudden it seems OK. And by the, to, for political violence, it doesn't mean that there has to be deaths involved. Uh, uh, a short while ago, there was protests in the um, I think it was the Nashville House of Representatives uh, mm -hmm. that prevented them from meeting. Just recently in Montana, they, they had to call out the police as well. There were these what are these teen takeover mobs yeah. that we've talked about before. So there seems to be. I mean, people talk about political violence, and it seems to me that as long as the violence is for the right cause, the press and the media think it's OK. And again, nobody seems to comment on it. I have a lot yeah. more to say, but 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 what's your take on all this? I I've I've been very, very disturbed by this, Robert. And the it, it, to me, it's a setup uh, so many times. Mean? Well, Think about back to 2020, okay? Back when the BLM riots were happening and, uh, you know, people were calling them the 1619 riots. And then those people were like, oh, I'm proud it's the 1619 riots. So they're acknowledging even that there is violence happening in the name of left wing causes. You had Kamala Harris and all these other uh, presidential candidates and officials um, bailing out rioters, bailing out people who were violent and assaulting people. We had a whole summer of love where people were getting shot in autonomous zones. And, and all of that was very much one-sided and in the name of, of, of political action, political persuasion by people who called themselves trained Marxists, right? So we see... Or, or we are demonstrated that political violence is acceptable. But then you have January 6th happen, and now all of a sudden political violence is not okay. Riots are not okay. I mean, riots are never okay. Let's be real. Like, rioting is never okay. Sure. Uh, demonstrations and protests, okay. Um, so why is it that um, we can bail out uh, people in BLM riots, but we place in holding indefinitely without charges uh, January 6th rioters. The difference is clear. Uh, if you're if you're on the left, you are allowed to do whatever you want. If you are on the right, we're going to lock you up and throw away the key. OK, so again, I have a slightly different take on it. I mean, I hear what you're saying, and there's there's certainly a lot of truth to that. But I think where I really my point in all of this is, you know, I took that sort of initial understanding, right, or initial mm -hmm. perception, because really, you know, as Groucho Marx used to say, what are you going to believe what I tell you or what you see with your own eyes? <laughs> and what I see with my own eyes is the fact that and again, I want to differentiate between fatality, killing people, which is obviously mm. bad and wrong. But just the whole concept of political violence or violence to further a political cause, mm, which may not result in someone dying, you know, whether, whether it's whether they're drowning out events because this university or that university is going to host a speaker. And then there's these, you know, mm. violent political uh, protests, they call them mostly mostly peaceful, which is, again, like kind of pregnant, but mostly peaceful. And therefore, this speaker or that is being shut down be because ostensibly it's too dangerous. So violence is being used for mm -hmm. political purposes. But here's right. the thing. So I went online and I looked up political violence in the United States. And you guys should all do these various searches. Mm. Ninety nine percent of what I found online was skewed towards violence of the political right or yep. the extreme right. And here's my other question before we get back to this. Why is it that the term extreme right is in the vernacular, but I've never heard anyone talk about the extreme left. As a matter Great of fact, question. if you look up extreme right, 
you know what you're going to find, right? Because you know who's running the, you know, the search engines. If you yep. look up extreme left, you're still going to get articles on the extreme right. And the only thing they're going to tell you about the extreme left is that, well, it was developed, you know, it's from communism and it developed in the 60s. But, you know, and, and here's, the, here's the thing. The, the violence has now become acceptable, it seems to me, if your cause is right. Because, yeah. and again, this is my theory, I don't think that the political left, let's call them the anti-fascist or the Antifas, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's really what you're talking about. And this is not just a national organization, it's international. And that is one of the differences. The extreme right or the incidents you see tend to be these small fringe groups. There's not these yes. you know, vast it's right It's unorganized. Wing, yeah, it's like a right group of conspiracy. a few guys. Rodham Clinton used to, you used to babble about. Yeah. But the left are these large national, well-organized organizations Right. And I think here's my theory. And then I want your comment. Yeah. I think the reason now that political violence to further political aims is once again acceptable is because the left views us not as the opposition, but as that we're evil. And therefore, yeah. the, since they're fighting evil. The means justify the ends. What do you think?